Hey, good morning, man. How you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Yeah. No, I went. I went out for a big walk today, and it was it was great. Um, just through the the town belt forest and that. Um, it was good to get out of the house after being in lockdown for a couple of weeks mm. and flash lockdowns um, sprung upon us. Um, but you know, it's been good. Good man. Are you finding uh, creative clarity now that you're yes. out of lockdown? Yeah. Well, it was actually quite good during lockdown. Um, I made some really good uh, routines and I was mm. getting a lot of writing done. Um, I was just basically, basically doing it every night. Um, there's something about it, you know, one, the first sort of couple of days, it was a little bit hard to get into, but by the end I was like, yeah, this is, this is a good rhythm. Well, I, I could keep doing this actually. Um, um, so yeah, no, I got quite a bit of writing done. Um, not so much photography. I couldn't really get out, but, um, yeah, I got quite a bit of writing done and a bit of reading. Um, and that, so. Yeah. I guess lockdowns will be really hard for you because, you know, you do want to get out and take photos. Um, but you are one of these people that could definitely keep themselves very busy, whilst locked away and i'm actually i was having a think about this and I, I think there are different modes of production like you get people who need to be in social environments and then mm. people who work really well on their own and um i do i have an office space in the city that i use um it's pretty much like my second home and uh I, there's, there's other people who work there but um just for the last week or so even though we've gone back to um a non-lockdown situation they're still working from home and so I had the office to myself and I often have it to myself anyway but I thought you know this is actually really nice just having like a, a huge empty office to my completed mm. to myself and I was saying I was saying to somebody like I, I reckon I would have been a really good lighthouse keeper um, <laughs> <laughs> you would. like like that, that that's sort of um, that sort of thing where it's like, you know, I go and, and I, I'm, I'm perfectly content to just spend an entire day working by myself mm -hmm. um, in, in a place. Um, and, and I find it really, uh, really energizing. Um, mm -hmm. And then potentially, you know, catching up with people at different times. But um, yeah, there's, there's something about it. Um, there's actually this idea. Have you heard of liminal spaces? Uh, is this something by Brian Eno? No, <laughs> no, no. Sounds like something by Brian. No, no. It's it's this thing. I think it's on like um, it might be like a Reddit thing or, or, or something like that, where it's the pictures of of um, of places that kind of it seems like people have just left. So it's like you know, empty hallways, um, empty bus stops, um, dead malls, like empty old American malls that nobody goes to anymore. Places like that, and it's just photos or, or like walkthroughs. Um, like video walkthroughs of places like that and um, there's all of these ones on, on YouTube as well of like walking through old Kmarts in like middle oh. America that are like abandoned and that's the music still playing and stuff like really quite bizarre um, the music's still going yeah I don't know maybe the guy like went in and turned it on uh, but um, yeah. it's kind of like kind of like urban exploration but for these like kind of like monolith of capitalism it's quite it's quite a cool idea and then just hallways and, and like empty elevators and stuff so there's all these like images of it and um the office that i work at it, it really feels like that because it's this old 1930s <laughs> building it's probably i think it's about 10 stories like an old um old new zealand insurance building but it's it's all been retrofitted out but like back in the 70s mm. so it's like 1930s building with 1970s decor and interior um and then like some of the offices are a bit newer but there's all these like little kind of nooks and crannies um, and it's just really cool because there's the, the half the building's empty, so you can just go up to any floor. There's no key card access to the other floors and stuff, um, and you can just explore. It, it, it's kind of a bit random to do, but um, yeah, it's really nice. And it sounds like that would be, you know, this liminal space Reddit that you're talking about would be really good for something like Chernobyl. Oh yeah, you know, walking yeah. around Chernobyl and seeing seeing the destruction. Yeah, well, like even just sort of like after a place stops being you know, dangerous or anything. It, it's just like the emptiness of it. Mm. Um, and, and I've really enjoyed that. Like I really, um, when I was still back in, in, in school and there, I used to just wander around the schoolyard and that, um, I mean, there was no one there and it, like university and stuff, you know, you, there's, I remember at my university, there was these like old, they were doing up the library when I first started there and down in the, the basement of the library was these like big moving, um, bookshelves like with all the archives in there and they were getting rid of them but you could still get down there when I first started and you could just kind of hide down there and like 
I remember being down there once and then like the building, it was like getting late and they actually like shut the doors and stuff. I was like, I had to get out. But there's something about places like that that are just, um, and same with airports. Like whenever you've gone, um, I remember I was at um, um, uh, the airport in uh, Bangkok, I think it was, Dongguan Airport, I think it was like, but not the main one, the, the one that everyone everyone goes to, 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 to the new one. But I, I, for some reason I was at the old one. And um, it's like these old terminals, like way on the other side of the airport that no one goes to. And you're just sort of sitting there with like your luggage. And you're like, man, am I in the right place or not? <laughs> um, what, what about you? Would you say that you work well by yourself or? Yeah, I do. Um, it's funny because I, I actually, you know, I do work better by myself. But sometimes I have like what they call FOMO fear of missing out. And I suddenly get these pangs of like this weird feeling where I, just I, I want to go to a party and I just want to like <laughs> mingle at a party and just like meet all these people and I think you know deep down I'm an uh, introvert but um, actually like a tiny little bit of me is, is an extrovert right so an, an ambivert I think they call it when you're, you're both um, but it's more it's more like 90% introvert and, and 10% extrovert but recently I've just been feeling like you know oh I just I just want to go to a party you know and just meet a load of people and just go crazy and um yeah i mean i have to sort of get rid of that thought because i know i probably wouldn't enjoy it after 30 minutes of being there is there even is that sort of thing even happening right now where you are or? yeah yeah absolutely man we're we're, we're full on gone back to normal it's a bit scary it's a bit quick um so you know there's there's massive parties and stuff and the owners or the or the club managers are trying to uh, ensure that everybody has either been tested or vaccined before they come. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, if you want to go to one of these club nights, you you do have to prove that you're negative in some oh, capacity. Yeah. Show some paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sounds, yeah. Is that is, does that is that your sort of thing? I, I never took you took you for someone who sort of. No, oh. no. So it, it was very much my youth. You know, when I was yeah. early twenties, I was a bit of a, a party. <laughs> animal sort of yeah. uh you know you know i lived in south korea so you can't escape that you can't escape yeah. that party animal side and uh you know three days a week going going clubbing or going to bars and stuff um and then and then after south korea i went to malaysia and um it was in malaysia where i really became comfortable with myself mm. and uh, so i was you know i was living on the island of borneo um and I was living in a tiny, tiny town called Kapit in Sarawak, Malaysia, over there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we talked about this much before, but there was just nothing to do there at all. Like the, the, the small town that I lived in had no roads that le led out of the town. So the only way to come in and out was by boat. And so um, I didn't leave the town often. And I just had to keep myself interested you know, somehow. And I started getting into yoga, meditation. I read a lot of books during that time, uh, more books than I've probably read, you know, throughout my whole life combined. And um, I just had to get really comfortable with myself. And, I, you know, I really calmed down during that time. Unfortunately, it was during a, a part, you know, it was during a 10 year creative block that I was having. So I, I was trying to write music during that time, but it just wasn't, nothing was gelling um and then wow yeah yeah it, I, I just i calmed down a lot and now i don't really i don't i'm not a partier anymore that's interesting so you're like nostalgic for sort of the old you you know and and that's just a tiny world. bit yeah just a tiny wow. bit that's interesting man I, I i totally hear what you mean though about the kind of the fomo like i think that's a big thing for people mm -hmm. you know many people today um mm -hmm. fear of missing out like um I don't know. Like, I um, I remember meeting with somebody one one time, long long time ago in Tokyo, and we, we went and took some photos together. And um, that, this individual was from New York, and mm. um, it really is quite a, a strange place, you know. In that sense, like you get a lot of young people, um, and everyone's kind of on this, um, you know, comp competitive bandwagon. You know, it's it's a very tough place to live, you know, financially, and that you kind of need to be born into the money or be extremely successful to even make ends meet in that city. Um, and there's this kind of certain social strata um, 
and and sort of comparison that kind of intrinsically follows you everywhere. Mm. Um, at least you know from from sort of my understanding, talking to people, and then that's sort of like. Uh, I mean, the classic Great Gatsby, but, you know, like just sort of comparing yourself to your neighbors and, and, and to your friends and, and always running that kind of algorithm of like, oh, you know, what am I doing? You know, where is it happening? Where is it at? Um, and I don't know. I always, that was always quite a strange thing for me. Um, I was like, man, what, what do you care? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You know, it, it's sort of, um, it's, it really is a strange thing. And, and when you take it on as, um you know, in a non-native way, like if you didn't grow up in that environment, it's like you can adopt that um, as a mode of operation. And in many big cities, you need to be like that. Or you you don't need to be like that, but you, it's a lot of people are doing that. Um, but for me, it was always not normal because, you know, where mm-hmm. I grew up, there was nothing happening whatsoever. You know, we made our own fun. Um, and I was lamenting to someone recently about just the, the childhood we had. And it's like, it seems like every generation has this thing, but it's like, man, we – we used to just like me, me and my brother, in that we when we were kids, you know, we used to just go out and play in the fields. Mm. You know, um, we lived on this farm. Um, we weren't farmers, but we lived on a farm, and so we had this like um, we used to dig trenches and, and tunnels and stuff, and just um, in, in the summertime when the grass got really long and that, oh, um, you know, we could just sort of go and, and, and sneak around and you know, just just kid stuff, you know. Um, um, there's these two big logs out the back, like huge, you know, like 1.5 meter diameter logs. And, and we kind of like made that into a bit of a hut. Um, and that was like our battleship when we were like 10 years old and that, <laughs> and it was like that stuff. It's like, people don't do that anymore. It's like, that's, that's FOMO, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So what are kids, you know, you know what are kids these days going to look back upon when they're older? What are they, what are they going to say? Oh, we, we Lock- played among us on on steam or something well i mean they had uh they'd be looking back on lockdowns for sure <laughs> but, but like I, I guess one of the things i like and this is interesting because it's like i was definitely you know we grew up with computers but it was like um the computers were part of the the, the fun you know like we tried to replicate that in our games you know i remember playing you know wolfenstein or whatnot mm. and then it was like we go out and we play that with my friends you know and and we try and do it in real life and it was quite a wholesome kind of thing, you know, and, and I really look back on it and I'm like, man, that was, that was the good old days, you know, like, that's FOMO. Yeah, and also like physically exploring your space, which really was the, you know, was the beginning of Derive. And, you know, kids back when we were young, that's what we were doing, right? Physically exploring our town. I don't feel like kids anymore do that. I mean, I, yeah, man, it's strange because, I, I mean, I remember – you know, growing up, you know, we were sort of surrounded by orchards and, and a bit of farmland and that. And, and we used to just sneak down. There's all these canals and we'd sneak down and, and just sort of like paddle along on the canals in the summertime. Um, we'd make little rafts. Um, we, we'd explore, you know, places. And, and when you're a kid, you know, people don't care, man. You can get away with anything like, you know, sneaking onto the neighbor's property and, and stuff. And it was like, it, it was it was so fun. Um, and it just sort of... I don't know. Yeah. It gave me the sense of adventure. Um, and, and it was like in a way games and, and films and that were like a, um, an addition to that, but there was this kind of like deep exploration of places. Um, and, and even the urban spaces, you know, like old buildings, um, you know, the schoolyard, that sort of thing. Um, and we just had unlimited time. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I, we had, we, we, we had nowhere to be and nothing to do. Yeah. I remember back in school, like six week summer holiday, uh, you know, that's what we have in the UK for summer holiday at school. Uh, mm-hmm. Six weeks felt like a lifetime. You could do yeah. so much in six weeks. And now it's just fly by. Time flies, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I think there's a different value system. And, and I always, I'm always curious about this um, value system of, of people from different places and different backgrounds, you know, because what, what's important to people, you know, and what do they value? Mm. Um, I was having another talk with somebody as well, like recently, and, I was trying to understand, like getting into this mindset of what I want to call the American mindset, which sounds very, you know, very vague, but, you know, this, this idea, this, this kind of attitude, because, you know, I've never been to the United States. Um, have, you, have you been, by the way? Yeah, I've been quite a few times all over yeah. Chicago, New York, um, yeah. Florida. I mean, I had totally intended on going, but um, obviously that didn't um, come mm. together with, with everything. But I've I've long been interested and fascinated by kind of the American psyche, you know, and, yeah. and so much I've read so much. It's 
you know, because New Zealand is, is kind of the opposite, you know, it's the small country. It's not, it's not really anything. Everyone's like, oh, no, we're not much of anything. Um, whereas, you know, it's like the US, you know, and there's so many different um, places and, and kind of each, each part of it has its own sort of story, right, and its own, um, its history. own history. And, yeah. and, I mean, that just, that's like derived right there, you know. Um, I'd really love to go, and I'd love to go, like, to off the places sort of off the beaten track, you know, mm. you know, places that no one would normally go. Cause you know, it seems like even there, it's like, you know, people certain stay tend to stay, you know, they're on the East coast or they, you know, they don't really see the things that are in between um, that often. So um, I'd love to just go and do the road trip, you know? Yeah. I think I'm, I'm quite interested in doing that as well, especially buy something like a bike or, um, oh, a, you know, motorbike, ride a yeah. motorbike through America would be absolutely amazing. And I think, you know, I am kind of, it's, it's weird. I sort of feel like really nostalgic for America somehow. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It sounds really weird, but, you know, I feel like because I know so much about the culture, I've watched loads of American movies and read loads of American books and stuff. I feel like I kind of do know the culture quite a bit. And um, it, it fascinates me that they're sort of like inner city culture. I love all that. And then, as you say, the sort of rural backbone of America. Yeah. It's just, it, it's such a fascinating place. And yeah, maybe we should, uh, we should go on a road was, trip, man. I was going to say, man, like we should bring the yeah. girls and, yeah, yeah. and go, go on a, cause okay, have you ever driven on the wrong side of the road? Um, no, 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 no. Always on the left. <laughs> we, we, we might, we might have to learn because I, we never, because I've been watching these videos of, um, again, this is just me like lockdown wandering, but um, there's these videos on YouTube mm. of these of these guys, and um, he's just driving around like parts of Texas, and mm. it's like, you know, like the hood of Texas, um, and it's like it looks so f- fantastic, you know, it's like these just like flat, you know, with the railway track, the you know Union Pacific like abandoned railway track, and the old brick kind of like Alamo buildings and and just like flat, plat, you know, but it look, it feels like it's out of a movie, you know? And, um, I mean, it, but it is, you know, and the people, the people there, you know, because they're in it, they, they don't see it, but it's like, I, I think we're the ones potentially coming in who'd be like, wow, you know, this is, this is it, you know? Um, with just the same as with, with New Zealand, you know, it's like most people here, like, oh, it's quite hard to see it because you, you grew up with it and it's so familiar. Um, but with that sort of that curiosity of, of new things and that kind of, um, um, you know, spark of interest that you get from going to a new place. Yeah, we might have to go because we we have quite a few you know people that we know in America, don't we? Both. Yeah, both we could us, we so. could we could do do a road trip, and if we um because we could meet up in California, you know, I reckon mm-hmm. that, that would be the, the easiest way to start, maybe or or either that or the other side, but then just sort of like do it, you know, as a sort of bit by bit, you know. Absolutely. Would you want to visit like every state sort of thing or just pick your pick your states? Uh I reckon Jack Kerouac sort of, you know, we'll, we'll follow the highway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely Texas. Um yeah. Austin for Texas, sure. 100%. Austin, yeah, Texas, California. Um I'm I'm also really interested in um Oregon, like that sort of Pacific Northwest. I'd like to go to Denver. There's a lot of people Oh, yeah. Denver. The um I'm I'm really keen on there's like there's these huge forests of like redwoods and that and um, there's these guys and they're like because apparently there's like all of these I mean the sequoia um, redwood is like the biggest tree in the world but there's actually quite a lot of them that are not even discovered yet like that are like super tall trees because the forests are so vast and um, that whole like Yosemite that whole Pacific Northwest that that whole area man like that's it it's just seems so fantastic, you know. Um, I'm excited, man. This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm just lamenting about it now. but um, And then there's just even like on the Great Lakes and that, um, that, that, that would be – I don't know how, how long I can actually stay in the U.S. just as a visitor, but uh, – Three months, we, maybe? Three months. I imagine it would be. Mm. I reckon we could, tra- we could see quite a bit in three months. Yeah, um, definitely. 100%. And um, I reckon I'd, I wouldn't be against trying to learn just to drive – on the right hand side because um again when i watch these videos of these like people driving around in, uh, on youtube they got to keep the dash cam and it always feels strange when they go to indicators I'm like, no, it just <laughs> it doesn't feel right um yeah. i think you'd get used to it pretty quickly yeah but it might might lead to a few hairy uh <laughs> hairy moments yeah man okay america it's on cool. Next time we can 2020 yeah. something 2020 yeah t- 
2020 X. Yeah. 2020 X. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, Sorry. I did, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about um, some new music today. Oh, uh, yes. Fragments. Uh, yeah. As you know, I just released a new record, a um, new album called Fragments. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's good. It's an interesting one for me because, you know, for the last, I would say two and a half years I've been doing Soundscapes Radio mm. which is something that you inspired me to begin um, for anybody that doesn't know this was actually <laughs> Cody's idea to do Soundscapes Radio uh, yeah. And, you know, I mean uh, yeah I helped you realize the idea you had inside you yeah That's, basically yeah. you you uh, you held the lighter <laughs> you, you flicked the lighter um, yeah and so, you know, every month or every few months, I'd release a new episode. And I, I was listening back to old episodes of Soundscapes um, <clears throat> the other day. Mm, and I listened mm. to every single episode. And mm. um, to, just to see how my music grew from, from episode one. And mm. then, you know, the first five were sort of like, you know, really rough and ready and rough around the edges and then six to ten were sort of like okay i was starting to find something like episode mm. seven is still one of my favorite episodes mm. Um, mm. i was starting to i was starting to unlock something and then 11 to 16 was just like yeah this is there i'm in my groove now and uh, it just felt like the right time to close it you know to put that 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 project to bed um mm. 16 episodes was enough i was starting to feel a bit weird about writing 17 18 19 you know it's like the iphone mm. you know mm. <laughs> where are they going to go next is, is it just going to be iphone 12 13 14 15 um so yeah it, it felt like it felt like it was time to put that project to bed and mm. then uh, so i thought you know let's just release a, 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 a an album you know, mm. do some art, album artwork for it, um, put it up on Spotify, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, it's, it, it turned out really well. Um, and and the, the feedback that I've been getting has been really positive all round, which is really nice. Yeah, no, I had a listen. It's, um, it's fantastic. Um, I didn't realize you're, you're, putting, you're putting soundscapes to bed. Um, that's, uh, I think that's good, though. Like, it, it kind of... Sometimes at the time is right, you know? Um, yeah, it felt like the right time because, yeah, like I said, it, it's gone on for a bit long now. Um, yeah. But nothing's changed about my compositional style. It's mm. just that the the naming system is going to be different from now on. I want to focus on more um, real albums. And I'm going to mm. make all of my albums uh, from now on the, the right length for an LP. So if mm. I did want to release a vinyl, it would just be straight onto vinyl, side A, side B. It, it is an interesting concept, like uh, how you can keep work going and how you can manage both the hype of creating work and kind of talking about your own work and then also kind of keeping things kind of going. It, 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 I think it is a challenge, you know, and we might have talked about this, but I, I think it is easy to hype something so much that is kind of upcoming and it hasn't even come out yet. And so you do need to like keeping a daily practice or a regular practice is really important. I think like, you know, keeping, keeping on doing what it is you do. And on, and also I think having work, especially numbered sequential work, it can almost be like, as you say, the iPhone 12, 15, whatever. And then it's sort of like, you're just churning it out almost, um, you know, where's the evolution of it? Um, and, and I think that evolution is the important thing. So even if it does get the numbers on it, like, which is totally fine. Um, as long as there is an evolution and, and it's continuing to evolve, um, mm -hmm. which is, I guess, where I'm at at this point with Wanderer 10, which, you know, it's been a, a sort of a challenge over the last little while, excuse me, to, to kind of bring that together. Um, but I've been working on that 10th edition yeah, as, as an evolution of everything that I've done up until now. Um, and, and it seems like every time I do a new edition of the magazine, it kind of does that. But this time, definitely, it's pushing it further you know looking at a, a larger format moving to a um, twice you know a, a4 size effectively twice as big mm. um and uh you know looking at just sort of the format the printing of it you know a whole bunch of different aspects and trying to also relocate the operation here back to new zealand which has been a as you know a multi-month almost a year now just trying to organize all of that is that quite difficult 
very difficult right now there's a global shipping crisis so trying to get stuff trying to get stuff onto a container ship because i got quite a lot you know like i think 300 kgs of stuff so you can't just ship that on the plane so try i have to get that onto a onto a freight onto a, sh- a shipping you know shipping container um from from a port in taiwan and get that over to auckland and um it's just to organize all of that is is a bit of a mission having to get customs declaration forms all of this stuff which uh, has been fun in a way but it's also quite challenging it's um it's all part of it though uh, but getting that back to new zealand so that we can make this into kind of the home base f- mm-hmm. for that and, and sending it out from here being a local operation um as opposed to trying to like distribute it you know i think the world it's not quite ready for that now anymore like it's it, i think things are moving back to being local and and then you know sending it out from a local base and that's kind of what i'm I'm looking at is, is sort of centralizing stuff back here yeah it sounds much better man yeah it, it's it's a challenge though like um again the logistics of stuff like this people people don't realize you know but it's like so much that goes into trying to bring it all together um yeah so yeah it's been, it's been quite good though so that office the liminal office space i was mentioning earlier is going to be it's that's going to be my home base effectively so because it's quite a large space and i've got there's like a separate room that a whole area that i can use for myself so that will be where the artwork lives as the studio um i've got some other people who will start working there with me um so we're kind of creating that collaborative space, which we've talked about before, that kind of the three P's, you know, people, place, and passion. Having a physical space that you can go to, I, I think really makes that, um, makes that work. Um, and then you can like workshop ideas. You can go, hey, this is something I'm working on. What do you think? You mm. know? Well, it puts your brain um, in a different, you know, when you're traveling to an office or a studio or something like that, it changes your brain from being your home brain to your work brain, I guess, right? Yeah. And then when you come back home, you know, you can still do stuff, but it's like you're... You know, you're in a, you know, you're, it's kind of like you're just cruising. You yeah. don't, it's not your, your, your main thing. So yeah, one of the big developments is, and again, just for, for the people listening, you know, it's like one, you know, magazine 10, it's, it's coming together. It's, 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 I get, I want to say it's like the most important edition yet. The themes that it's talking about and, and the exploration of it, which I, I will be announcing, a, you know, sort of soon uh, is, is sort of really important and close to my heart. And then, um, yeah, kind of the production mode of production, which is the space, which is quite a personal space at the, at the office. It's, you know, I've, I've been there by myself, but actually starting to bring people in, but not just for the social aspect of it, but actually, you know, people who are also sort of quiet creators in their own way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we go there and we can get stuff done and then we can sort of disperse, uh, you know, but at least having that kind of energy concentrated there. I, I think there is something about it that makes it more than the sum of its parts. Um, it sounds like you're going to start a movement or something. I love it. Yes, no, it, it is going to begin. And there's already, I mean, people, I think people will really respond to the idea, you know, like I think that FOMO, you know, again, I, I think the, the days of, of the, the Instagram traveler are, are over, you know. I think not, a, not only are they practically, you can't do it, but I think the attitude that goes into that, you know, is, is, is over and kind of the fakeness of it all. Yeah. Um, I really feel like there's this kind of general weariness towards that. Um, and so, you know, cause you know, you can look at that stuff and be like, man, how, how are they doing this? You know, how, where, where are they? You know, what are they doing? You know, what's the story behind this, but it is just the highlights and it's, mm. it's um, the story behind it's often quite empty, you know? Um, fake, isn't it? Yeah. And it's this kind of presentation of, of, of yourself, whereas it's like, well, actually you're not missing out on anything by saying that um, mm. you're actually, you know, we're creating our own stories, you know? And so I, I don't know, man, like I, I have home parties here sometimes, you know, and, and we have friends around, but it's, it's very much, uh, you know, the people that we know and, and people are welcome to bring, you know, new friends, but we're not, we're not seeking out something, you know, we, <laughs> I, I know that I know there's not anything out there that's sort of gonna, um, it's not enough to fear, fear anyway, that you're mm. missing out on it. I don't know. Maybe it's different in a big city, but um but here, definitely, I feel really content just, you know, pottering along and, and working through the stuff, catching up with friends every now and then. Yeah, man. Um, but if you if we go back to, you know, Drive Wanderer for, for a second, like how, mm-hmm. and if, if you look back at your first episode, like I did with Soundscapes Radio, and then you look at number 10, for example, what do you think are the biggest things that you've learned or changed or improved on? I, th- I think it's become a lot more nuanced, like, definitely earlier on it was kind of snapshots and vignettes and kind of the the experience of it but the last couple of editions have very much been 
uh, or there's been a little bit of experience, but most of it's been retrospective, mm-hmm. um, you know, going through older work and trying to find the stories in it. Um, and so I've had to really think about how I put it together and, and what I'm trying to tell. And so it's a little bit less literal and a, and a bit more sort of poetic. And especially with number 10, which I'm working on is it's, it's very much, you know, the images and everything kind of coming together as a, a poetic piece. Um, kind of a, a lamenting of the kind of the old days because you know definitely when, when number one when the first one came out you know it was like everyone was jet setting around the world it was this kind of this kind of like the, the inflection point of of travel and and that whole kind of movement of 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 the instagrammer um and and i was always kind of against that like it wasn't it's, it's it's always a problematic relationship but like i kind of hated it you know like mm. i just wanted to take photos and, and wander around you know but um now it's like you know people can't do any of that um and so it's leading to kind of a bit more introspection i think or hope but yeah i don't know the the world's changing you know it it really is Um, yeah becoming more more closer to home people are becoming more caring about their homes and and where they live um and skills like man like seriously i'm i'm really starting to get uh a little bit worried that I'm not very good with my hands. Like I can't make stuff. Um, yeah. And I've been thinking about this recently. I've, I've just recently got gotten into uh, woodworking videos on YouTube and yeah. I'm absolutely obsessed with this one channel called Ishitani mm-hmm. Furniture. And uh, yeah. it's just this guy who um, is making just beautiful pieces of, of woodwork, like, you know, beds and desks and, gorgeous um draw sets sets of drawers um and i have fomo <laughs> it, well, it's it's a sort of different fomo but i'm like shit i can't do any of that you know i, yeah. I can't make anything with my hands. i want to yeah i really want to make something with my hands but i don't know if you've yeah. noticed but on um on youtube there's this genre of video which is um kind of like japanese people making stuff and it can be anything it doesn't have to be woodworking it can be like uh, making food or making um bread or something like that and they record themselves doing it and there's no talking there's no music it's just like this this the silence of their room (laughs) or their their studio or something and it's it's this whole genre and i keep stumbling upon these videos and they're so beautifully made and the mm-hmm. text is all you know beautiful and stuff um but yeah this this guy ishitani furniture i really recommend checking him out yeah yeah no i um i do i can relate to that i um i enjoy that sort of thing uh, myself it's quite relaxing um actually about a year ago i started picking up welding um, oh wow um i because I, I always wanted to just to learn it and i managed um i, I got a- i gained access to a, mm. a mig welder um and some just scrap metal and stuff so i made i made some stuff out of that and i would like to return to that actually um because it, it's quite basic like you just mm. you literally just have to put the settings make the settings right on the thing and then you get ready to go like um it take it, I, the, the old guy who taught me is like it took him about five months to show me how to do it and then it takes a lifetime to perfect it <laughs> like um because it you know you, if you go too fast or you go too slow it it, it doesn't work you know um so, um, yeah, that, that was really cool. And, and that I definitely can relate to that workshop feel. Um, I, I think you should give yourself credit though. Like, um, I mean, we're both digital people, like, mm. um, you know, my old man, you know, he can work with cars and he can make stuff, but you know, I, I can make stuff on my computer, you know, and you too, you can too. So yeah, I, I think it, it, it is a different skill set. It's not that we're not skilled, but it just happened to be sort of a bit more abstract in what we do. Um, yeah, no, I totally relate to that. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 I think that's where the studio thing. I think it's really cool because just having a space where people can come and like workshop stuff is 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 really important. Um, everyone's sort of behind their screens, you know, but actually having a space where it's like you can come and you don't have to actually even talk to anyone, but you can just be amongst creation. Mm. You know, I think there's something really important about that. It's almost kind of like a hacker ethos in a way, like. Um, and cause I mean, I hate hot desks. I hate open plan, all of that stuff, you know, it's total bullshit, but in this situation, it's like, no, we're volunteering to be there. It's kind of like the university kind of workshop feel, mm. um, I have all the gear there. You know, if you want to do something, you can, and you can um, feel something in the air, right? There's an electricity that is inspiring you. Oh uh, yeah. I'm going to give you, I'm just going to describe something to you and, and I, I, I'll see if you can kind of pick it up, but do you, know, do you know the feeling of like like an old university uh, kind of workshop area and it's got that sort of slight tint of kind of like 
you could smell like the paint, kind of like art, like an art um, art studio kind of, mm-hmm. you know, and it's a little bit cold. Um, you know, the heating doesn't quite work and, and we turn the heaters on and it sort of makes a buzzing sound. Um, high roofs, um, you can hear the birds outside, but it's just like small windows. Um, like for me, you know, that's kind of like, that's the liminal space. That's the university kind of workshop where no one goes, but it's like the hackers are down there doing stuff. Um, I love it, man. That's artists fantastic. making stuff. Um, I, used to, I spent a bit of time hanging out at the Masashi no Art Uni University in Tokyo and, and it's like mm. exactly like that. And I've been like trying to capture that ever since because it's so sublime, you know. Um, but that's like, that's where it's at, you know. And um, you don't really get that at home. Trying to work from home, you just... I mean, you have to make your, you have to make your space in other ways. Like, um, for example, I really like to burn incense when I'm uh, yeah. making music. And also we did that in, in Wellington. Oh, in Didn't Taiwan. Oh, no, Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was the best, yeah. And it really it really helped. It got got you in the mood, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I actually I found some um, I found some old photos from that actually, but um, oh, like please share them. Pop, later. Polaroid, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, so I think like I guess sort of summing things up. So coming back to the you started with FOMO, but I, I still don't. I don't. Yeah, I, I think the 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 Simon you are today. I, I don't feel like he. I, for me, it doesn't seem like he he has the FOMO, but maybe the old the old Simon. Just um, yeah, five percent of the time just, I'd like to go to a party. <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like, I think you're not missing out on anything. You know, no. Yeah, you know, returning. You know, again, returning to like your 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 space. You know, like what's your, you know, kind of your base, you know, area, like where you can mm. just enjoy your own presence. You know, and 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 I was, I was even thinking like I talk about the lighthouse. You know, I'm the lighthouse keeper. But even though it's like, man, if we were going to do a mission to Mars, you know, it's like you could spend six months on this thing or on a boat, you know, I was always thinking like in the old days, you know, it takes six months to get to New Zealand from, from the UK on, 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 on like a, an old boat. And it's like, man, Matt, what are you going to do? You know, you're stuck on a boat and um, right. people manage a to lot. do it, you know, they write, you know, and it's like, there's something quite beautiful about that. And we've forgotten what it's like to just have nothing and not be able to even do anything. Um, yeah. It's like, not not having access to anything digital, not having you know, just sort of sitting there and being like, well, now now what? <laughs> you know, like what? Um, just being comfortable something- with yourself. It's it's something that you yeah. get used to as you get older, right? I remember when I was very young, um, the thought of going to watch a movie on my own, or the thought of going to a restaurant or a coffee shop on my own was very scary. And I thought, no, nah, of course I couldn't do that. Why would I go on my own? Everyone would think I'm a freak. But as you get older, I, I think it happened probably around about you know twenty five or something for me. I was like became very comfortable with with myself. Yeah, yeah. No, that's I think that's really a really valid point. I mean, you're talking to the guy. I mean, I you know I go for I go for five hour walks by myself. You know, I, I it's like, it, it it is what it is. You know, and um, I, I think the FOMO. You know, if if anyone listening is sort of in that space, it's like look. You're not missing out on anything. You know, you 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 are where you are. Mm. Um, if anything, get out of your room. Get out of you know. Get out of home. Go for a walk or something. Um, and if you're in a place where that's tough, you know, I know a lot of places in the world. Like New Zealand previously was just in a lockdown, and so it is. You can't necessarily go out that much, but even just a small walk or, or something, it can kind of clear the air. You know, I was feeling a little bit um, a little bit down this morning. You know, just with a, a lot of things happening in the world. Uh, at the moment but i thought you know i'm not gonna let this get me i go for a walk and i went out actually and uh it, it's so much better you know I, w- I went down to the waterfront and went for a small swim actually uh, in the in the harbor which was uh, which was beautiful so there's so much writing about people who you know f- creative famous writers and artists who use their daily walk as inspiration yeah yeah it's so, time to um, think yeah but um, yeah, man, that's uh, that's us. So um, I am keen to um, sort of see where your, your music goes next. And um, yeah, I've actually I've actually already written the next album. <laughs> <laughs> it's already, prolific. It's already yeah. done. <laughs> oh man! Uh, but I'm not going to yeah. release it yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a bit of time uh, mastering this one, getting yeah. it really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I know the feeling, and yeah, man, let's uh, let's let's keep talking. I've got some projects as well in mind for you, so um, I'm kind of keen to see what happens next. Sweet, let's catch up soon. All right, thanks, Simon. Yeah, have a good one. I'll catch you next time. Yeah, good to chat. Speak soon. Take care.